Hello students, welcome back to our lesson. Um, in the previous lesson uh, we did talk about, uh, I did introduce uh, this topic, that is the third topic in Form 3, Reproduction in Plants and Animals, where we defined reproduction, we looked at the types of reproduction, we also looked at the uh, advantages of reproduction and the advantages and disadvantages of both uh, sexual reproduction as well as asexual reproduction. We also uh, talked about cell division, we did define cell division and we say that um, for one to be able to understand or synchronize about this concept of cell division then a student should be able to understand the concept of uh, the chromosomes whereby we did have a look at the chromosome structure and its functions. So I believe you still remember how the chromosome looks like and some of the properties of a chromosome. So, moving forward, once you have internalized that concept of chromosome, then you can now proceed by looking at the first type of cell division, that is known as mitosis, because we do have two types, that is a mitosis and meiosis. So let us begin with a mitosis. So what is mitosis? So we shall look at what is mitosis, why does it take place, and the significance of mitosis and the various stages that uh, do take place until this uh, first stage of cell division is done. So mitosis. So this is the process in which a cell is the process. This is the process in which a cell. This is the process in which a cell divides into two daughter cells. A cell divides. So the keyword here is two into two daughter cells into two daughter cells is the process by which a cell or a parent cell divides into two daughter cells and these two daughter cells each will be having the same number of chromosomes as parent cell each having each having same number each having same number of chromosomes of chromosomes as the parent cell each having the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell so let's say if the parent cell be, uh, began with uh, four chromosomes at the end of the day each of these two daughter cells will be having four chromosomes if it began with the two chromosomes eventually the two daughter cells will be having two chromosomes so therefore the parental uh, number of chromosomes will be maintained or the genetic constitution of these uh, organisms will be maintained at the end of mitosis so where does it take place where does this process takes place it takes place in body cells and uh, if you can remember in the previous lesson i did talk about the types of cells in living organisms we have body cells called the somatic cells, and you also have the uh, reproductive cells, or the gametes. So it takes place in somatic cells. This takes place in somatic, somatic cells, or simply the body cells. And once it occurs in these body cells, what will, what will it result to? Resulting into growth. Resulting into one resulting one into growth number two repair resulting into growth and repair of worn out body tissues worn out body tissues you might be asking yourself for example the lizard scenario a lizard you can cut the, the lizard tail but after a short while or after a few days, the tail will have degenerated. So that is a mitosis. Once a body part has been uh, degenerated, then you shall have a uh, uh, regeneration of this new body part. That is uh, a concept of mitosis. So that is a mitosis. Let us now look at the stages of mitosis. Stages of mitosis. Stages of mitosis stages of mitosis so basically cell division will involve uh, four key steps four key steps but we do have 
a resting face. A resting face. So in case you are being asked an exam, name the four main stages of cell division. Then you shall skip the first stage because that first stage is just a resting phase, a resting stage where the cell internalizes and regenerates energy for to drive the cell through the entire cell division. But for this purpose, we shall be able to include all of them. So we have interface. The first stage of cell division is called interface. Then interface is followed by prophase. We have prophase. The next, the next stage is the prophase. Then you have metaphase. Metaphase. And then you have anaphase. We have anaphase. And finally, you have the telophase. Telophase. These are very easy steps. Just, you can, can just be used. You can use the first letter to be able to come up with a formula to remember this, uh, how these stages follow each other. So in case you don't want to remember, you don't want to forget how these stages follow each other, you just have EPMAT. EPMAT, that is for interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and finally you have telophase. So these are the stages of mitosis, or basically the stages that do occur during cell division. So we have interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So we shall have a close look at what happens uh, in each and every stages of mitosis. And we shall also be able to express these stages diagrammatically. You can be given a diagram in an exam situation. Then you are asked, based on the diagram above, identify the stage of cell division. So we want to be able to answer such questions. So let us begin with the first stage, that is interface. Let us begin with the interface, which is the first stage, but not the main stage. Interface. interface. So, in an exam, I want to repeat this, in an exam, in case you are being asked to give the four main stages, then these are the four main stages. You don't have interface. These are the four main stages. Four main stages. But these four main stages must be preceded by the first phase, that is now interface. So what happens during interface? What happens during interface? So interface, we shall be having, so before we, look, before we look at what happens during interface, we need to look at how does the cell look like, or how does the cell components look like during this stage. So number one, this is the resting stage, you can put it into brackets, this is the resting stage. Resting stage. So I believe you said remember about the chromosomes. Remember I said that chromosomes, once you understand the concept about the chromosomes, then moving forward it will be very easy. So in this case, what will make you understand that this is interface? In the first case, you look at the appearance of the chromosomes. So in this case, the chromosomes are not visible. Chromosomes are not visible, but they appear as coiled structures. Chromosomes not visible. but appear as coiled structures called chromatin. So they appear as coiled structures called chromatin. Called chromatin. So it is now at this stage where we have duplication of these chromosomes to form two sister chromatids. Number two, duplication. Remember duplication is producing exact copy of the same material. Duplication, so here we have duplication. Duplication of chromosomes into two sister Chromatids. We have duplication of these chromosomes to produce two sister chromatids. I still believe that you remember what we meant by sister chromatids in our previous lesson on the structure of chromosomes. So remember, two chromatids will be able to meet at the centromere to now form a chromosome. So one chromatid and another chromatid portion, that is what we call sister chromatid. Uh -huh. This is how we, we, uh, I told you in the other lesson. That is a 
one of the chromatid, another chromatid. So they meet at the centromere. So this is a sister chromatid, another sister chromatid. So once they, so in case this was the uh, one of the chromosomes. So in case we have a duplication, then we have two sister chromatids to form the chromosome. That is the another thing that you need to understand there. Another feature that will enable you to understand that this is the interface. Number two is that um, there is synthesis of new cell organelles. Synthesis of new cell organelles. Synthesis of new cell. There is synthesis of new cell organelles. E.g., here we shall have Golgi bodies. There will be synthesis of Golgi apparatus or Golgi bodies. Golgi apparatus. We shall also have synthesis of centrioles. We shall have the synthesis of centrioles and mitochondria. Mitochondria and also ribosomes will be synthesized at this stage. ETC. So there will also be a buildup of energy to drive the cell through the entire cell division. Buildup of energy in form of adenosine triphosphate. Buildup of energy to drive to drive the cell to drive the cell through the entire cell division through the entire cell division so those are the some of the activities that will be taking place during interface diagrammatically diagrammatically now how does a cell appear during interface stage so let us now use the example of an animal cell. We shall use the example of an animal cell to illustrate how it occurs. So this is the cell membrane. Remember, an animal cell does not have any cell wall. So it has the cell membrane. So that is the cell membrane. Then during an uh, interface, the nucleus, the, uh, the nuclear membrane is intact. So we shall have the nuclear membrane here. We shall have the nuclear that is the nuclear membrane. So this is a cell membrane. That is the cell membrane. Then we have the nuclear membrane. Nuclear membrane. Then what is much uh, important is now to look at how the chromatin uh, the, uh, the chromatid look like. Then you have the nucleolus. The nucleolus is also intact. You can label it on this side. We have the nucleolus. The nucleolus. That is the nucleolus. It is intact. And we also have, so remember I said that uh, during this stage, the chromosomes are not visible, but they appear as uh, coiled structures known as the chromatin. So how, how the chromatin looks like? So they appear like red light structures. So we have the chromatin portions here. These are now the chromatin portions. The chromatin portions which are coiled. That way, I want to use uh, two separate pens to show that uh, we have four chromatin structures. That way. That way. So these are now the chromatin. That is now the chromatin. So that is now the chromatin structure. Chromatin. So they appear as dread-like structures which are coiled. So therefore the chromosomes are not much visible during this stage. And you also mentioned about synthesis of new cell organelles. So one of the new cell, uh, cell organelles that will be much visible is the centrioles. So the centrioles will form at this junction, at this juncture here. We shall have the centrioles. Centrioles and centrioles. And of course, after the nuclear membrane, we do have the cytoplasm. That is the cytoplasm. So that is how the cell appear during interface stage. During interface stage. So I believe in an exam situation, you can be able to understand that. So once you see a cell being drawn that way, then without any uh, blinking of an eye, you know that that is the interface stage. So that is the end of interface. Let's move forward to profess.
Prophecy is the next stage of mitosis. Prophecy. So number, uh, we now have prophecy. Prophecy stage. So what happens during prophecy of mitosis? What will happen during the prophecy of mitosis? So number one is that um, the two chromatids, the two chromatids shorten and thicken. Or we talk about chromatids. Chromatids shorten and thicken. Chromatids shorten and thicken. So they now be able to shorten and thicken and join at their centromia and join at their centromia. So in this case, once they join at the centromia, then appear as visible chromosomes. Hence, appear as visible chromosomes. Hence, appear as visible chromosomes. So in this case, chromosomes will be visible going forward. Number two is that homologous chromosomes pair up. Homologous chromosomes pair up. Homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes pair up. Aha. Uh -huh. A recap. What do we refer to as homologous chromosome? Homologous chromosome are chromosomes that look alike in appearance but they have the similar genetic makeup, but they do look the same in appearance, but the genetic composition is what varies. So they'll be able to pair up. Number two. Number two is that uh, now the centrioles will move to the opposite sides. Centrioles. These are the centrioles here. So these centrioles will migrate to opposite sides of the cell membrane. Centri or not of the cell membrane, but of the nuclear membrane. Centrioles moves or migrate, moves to opposite poles of nuclear membrane, of nuclear membrane. Spindle fibers begin to form. Spindle fibers begin to form. But they will only form in animal cells, not in plant cells. Plant cells do not have spindle fibers, so you must specify here. In animal cells. In animal cells, we shall be having spindle fibers beginning to form. We shall be having spindle fibers beginning to form. Then finally, the nuclear membrane begins to break. Nuclear. Nuclear membrane begins. So this is now at the late prophase. Nuclear membrane begins to break. This is normally evident during the late, during the very late stages of prophase. So this is called it late prophase. Aha. Let us now put these words into, diag into a diagrammatic expression so that uh, once a diagram is drawn for you, then you can be able to, so uh, to see that this one is prophase and not metaphase or any other stage. So this is now the, I'm using the typical animal cell to, uh, to show this. That is the cell membrane. Uh -huh. Let me draw this one. This is the nuclear membrane. That is the nuclear. That is the nuclear membrane. And um, moving forward, that is the nuclear membrane. Then here, remember now these are chroma, these are chromatids shorten and thicken and join at their centromia. So they, in this case, we shall not be having chromosomes. But again, homologous chromosomes pair up. So I want to use different uh, colors to show these homologous chromosomes pairing up. Uh -huh. So you have this first case of homologous chromosome that way. And then you have another chromosome. Pairing up, but they don't meet at any point. It is just pairing up. We have another one here. So homologous, homologous chromosomes 
pair up. We have homologous chromosomes pairing up. And then nucleolus disappears. So another point here to add here. Nucleolus disappears. Nucleolus. Nucleolus disappears. So we don't have any nucleolus here. Then these are centrioles migrate to the opposite poles. So we now have centrioles. Centrioles migrating to the opposite poles that way. Uh -huh. And then spindle fibers begin to form. So we have spindle fibers beginning to form. So now the spindle fibers beginning to form that way. And then at the end of uh, this uh, process stage, the nuclear material or the nuclear membrane will begin to disappear. So I shall just so, uh, cut that to show how it begins to disappear. It begins to disappear. So the nuclear membrane will begin to disappear. So that is how the cell looks like. That's how the cell looks like during prophase stage. Cell membrane, nuclear membrane begins to disappear. The nuclear membrane begins to disappear. And then you have spindle fibers are migrated to the opposite, uh, the centrioles migrated to the opposite poles, and spindle fibers begin to form. Then here you have homologous chromosomes pairing up within the nucleoplasm. Let us move forward to the next stage. So that is what happens during prophase. Metaphase. The next stage is metaphase. The next stage is metaphase. Metaphase. So metaphase, this is the third stage of a cell division. So what happens during this stage? What happens during metaphase stage? So the nuclear membrane now, which began to disappear during the late prophase, will disappear completely. So nuclear membrane disappears completely. Nuclear membrane. Nuclear membrane disappears. The nuclear membrane disappears and hence, hence chromosomes. Hence chromosomes are free in the cytoplasm. So chromosome will be free to move within the cytoplasm. Number two. Number two, during metaphase, now this is very important. So the chromosomes, not chromatids, but chromosomes. So these homologous chromosomes will arrange at the equator of the cell. So homologous, homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes migrate. Homologous chromosomes migrate to the equatorial plane to the equatorial plane or to the center of the cell. Very important here. Homologous chromosomes, please. Homologous chromosomes and not sister chromatids. So the homologous chromosomes will be able to migrate to the equatorial plane of the cell or to the, at the center of the cell. Then uh, these chromosomes will be attached to the spindle fibers at the centromere. Chromosomes. Chromosomes attached. Chromosomes attached to the spindle fibers. Attached to the spindle fibers at their centromeres. At their centromeres. Why do you think this one is very important during a metaphase? Why should they be attached to, the, to their centromeres and not along the chromatids? This is to be able to allow even distribution of chromosomes to the daughter cells. To allow even, this is to allow even distribution 
of chromosomes to allow even distribution of chromosomes to this daughter cells to the daughter cells and that marks the end of metaphase let us now express it diagrammatically I'm still using the example of the animal cell we have the same membrane we did have the spindle fibers sorry the centrioles were at the poles so the centrioles nucleolus disappeared and we also have nuclear membrane disappeared so in this case we now have these homologous chromosomes being arranged at the equator so they will be able to migrate at the equator that way that way uh -huh. I want to show the difference we have remember they had paired so that is the first pair of the homologous chromosomes then the other pair so they have now migrated to the equator so that is the equator and then how are they held to the spindle fibers they are held to the spindle fibers at their centromere so we have now the spindle fibers running across here to the centrioles that way so you have the passing across their centromeres that way in that manner that's how they are held that is how they are held that way so you have the spindle fibers uh, they, we have the centrioles being attached to the spindle fibers at the centromere and you have seen the importance of that so in this case now the chromosomes are free to move along the cytoplasm because we don't have any nuclear membrane prophase sorry anaphase the next page is anaphase so once you're done with that we now proceed to anaphase stage anaphase anaphase stage so at anaphase we shall be having some other changes taking place in anaphase now the chromatids chromatids will separate at the centromere at this point these chromatids will separate at the centromere and migrate to opposite poles so chromatids chromatids separate chromatids separate at the centromere and migrate and migrate to opposite poles why do you think this is possible this is due to the fact that the spindle fibers begin to shorten due to shortening this is due to shortening of spindle fibers due to shortening of the spindle fibers so the spindle fibers begin to shorten remember these are the spindle fibers so they begin to short to become short so they become short or due to the shortening of the spindle fibers they will be pulling these chromatids to the opposite poles that is the first case we shall be able to express that diagrammatically as we move on number two is that these spindle fibers begin to disappear spindle fibers begin to disappear spindle fibers begin spindle fibers begin to disappear then finally uh, in case it is an animal cell there will be constriction of the cell membrane so in animal cells in animal cells cell membrane cell membrane begins to constrict begins to constrict whereas in plant cells whereas in plant cells the cell plate begins to form the cell plate begins to form this is towards the late anaphase late anaphase stage so diagrammatically how does it appear like diagrammatically so this is our cell membrane that was our cell membrane i'm using the typical animal cell to represent that so we no longer have the nucleolus but we still have the 
centrioles. We have the centrioles at this juncture here. We have the centrioles. We have the centrioles. So, these spindle fibers begin to shorten by pulling to have the opposite pole. So, as they shorten, they'll be pulling the sister chromatids to the opposite poles. So, in the first scenario, we have this uh, kind of uh, scenario here. So, it has begun to shorten that way. The other one has begun to shorten that way. And another one, and the other one. Then you also have another one here that is shortening. The spindle fibers are becoming short. Another one there, and then finally you have another one there. So as they become short, they'll be pulling then these homologa these chromatids towards the opposite poles. That is the first section that has been pulled. So it is just separating these chromosomes at the centromia, pulling the chromatid portion to the opposite poles, and the other one on this side. That way. Then uh, we have another one being pulled to the opposite pole, that way. Uh -huh. We proceed. We also have another one that is being pulled to the opposite pole, that way. Another one, that way, due to the shortening of the spindle, fibers of the spindle apparatus. Then finally, we have chromatids pulled that way. So that is the appearance of the anaphase stage during mitosis. So at the late uh, anaphase stage, we shall be having the cell membrane beginning to constrict within the center. For the case of the animal cell, we shall have a slight constriction that way. This is now what you mean by constriction that way. This is for animal cell at late telophase, uh, sorry, at late anaphase. But for the case of a uh, plant cell, then there will be uh, the formation of a cell plate, but you're going to look at that when you are now looking at the last stage of mitosis. That is now telophase stage. The telophase stage. So number four, uh, or the last stage now is telophase. The telophase. This is now the telophase stage. So this is the last stage of uh, mitosis. This is the last stage of mitosis whereby we have the following features. So these chromatids will collect at the ends of the cell, be it plant cell or be it the animal cell. So these chromatids will be able to separate at these opposite ends and duplication of chromosomes will begin. Number one, very important. So chromatids, these chromatids that were being pulled toward the opposite pole, so chromatids now collect. Chromatids collect at opposite end of the cell and duplicates. Duplicate is to produce is to produce an exact copy of the same material and duplicates to form chromosomes. And duplicate to form the chromosomes. Number two, what will happen? Number two. Remember the nuclear membrane had already been lost, so the nuclear membrane will begin to form around the new set of chromosomes. Nuclear membrane. Nuclear membrane begins to form around, begins to form around the new chromosome set. The new chromosomes set. That is very important. Then, now towards the end of uh, this uh, stage, that is telophase, the cytoplasm divides completely. The cytoplasm, cytoplasm divides in animal cells, in animal cells, it is by constriction of the cell membrane it is by constriction of the cell membrane whereas in plant cells whereas in plant cells is by cell plate formation cell plate formation nucleolus appears. Nucleolus, sorry, nucleolus 
reappears. And that marks the end of that marks the end of uh, telophase. But remember, these chromosomes will not be visible towards the end of telophase. So how will they appear? How will they appear? So that means they'll be able to appear like the interface stage. So the chromosomes become less distinct and regain their dread-like appearance. Chromosomes. Chromosomes become less distinct. The chromosomes become less distinct and regain and regain their dread-like and regain their dread-like appearance and regain their dread-like appearance. Illustration. So this is how the cell will appear. So we shall have a little of it. We have the cell membrane beginning to constrict. And remember we did have uh, some of our homologous chromosomes being pulled toward the end. Uh -huh. That way, that way, that way, that way. That way, uh, uh, that way. And then you did have the, these homologous chromosomes. Had the, sorry, the chromatids. The chromatids. You had the chromatids that way. You had the chromatids. So once, the, once we have done that, then the nuclear membrane begins to form. This is early, early telophase. We have nuclear membrane beginning to form around the new set of chromosomes. Early, early uh, telophase. This is early telophase. Then towards the end of our late telophase, late telophase, so at the late uh, telophase, we now have them completely separated. So we shall have complete separation of these chromosomes to now give us the two daughter cells. To now give us the two daughter cells. And these two daughter cells, each shall have a nuclear membrane, a nuclear membrane, that way. And the nucleolus will reappear in each set. And then these chromosomes will become less distinct.